Herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Ausgabe von Women Hit Harder, dem Female Power Podcast. Aber heute haben wir einen ganz besonderen Gast und zwar englischsprachig. Tori Bock, she is a professional jump roper. And that's why we switch into English. Hi Tori, nice that you're here. Hallo, danke. <laughs> Can you say in German what you do, what we just... I can't always remember. Okay, so hello, my name is Tori. I come aus den USA und uh, uh, springs. Ja, uh, yeah. ich bin Weltmeister. Ich bin Weltmeister in, im Springseil springen. Im Springseil springen. Ja, yeah. that was so good. <laughs> so Tori, you are 27. You're a, a multiple professional professional jump roper, and you've started rope skipping at the age of five. That's Almost like my, I do my sport, so it's 22 for you, 23 for me, that's ah, cool. pretty long. So please tell me about how it started and yeah, yeah, just tell me about your journey, it's so interesting. Cool, um, so I was really lucky that there was a jump rope team where I grew up in, in West Virginia. And I happened to be at like an AAU, which is a junior Olympic tournament in the States. I saw jump rope and just, I fell in love. Like I, I knew I wanted to do it. So I begged my parents to take me to jump rope practice and we had this team in the area. I went and was absolutely terrible. I couldn't jump. I was really, really bad. But I, I went home and kept practicing. And my mom actually saw how much I loved to jump and, and just kept trying and trying. So she started coming to the practices as well to learn how to be a coach. And then she learned how to judge also. So she's also heavily involved in the sport of jump rope. And her and I have kind of, you know, grown up in the sport together. And we, we share that as well, which is really special. But yeah, I just, I fell in love with it and couldn't get enough of it. And, you know, all of yeah. from there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I saw on your, on your web page, it's crazy. You travel the world, you're teaching, you are performing in a variety of events and shows. And you're a world level athlete. Like, 30, <laughs> we had this, 30-time world champion. Yeah, it gets confusing to people because I'm You're not, even not 30. 30 so. <laughs> Our sport works a lot like track or swimming, where we have multiple events okay. that you can compete in. So that's how those titles happen. And at any world tournament, we could have over 10 events. And right now, how our sport works is that you can compete in all of them. It's absolutely exhausting. And some events are solo, some are to, with one other person, some are a groups of three or four and so on. Um, so you can you have a lot of freedom to be able to decide what you compete in. Um, but yeah, that's how you can get multiple titles. <laughs> okay, okay, now I finally understand. This is like, yeah, swimming. Pretty yeah, much exactly. Right. Okay, exactly. But you are preferring to do it on your own or in a team? I've, I've done actually everything. I, I love team events. Those are probably my favorite, um, especially Double Dutch, where there's three of us and we have the two ropes. I hope most people know what Double Dutch um, is. And uh, this is really fun because there's so much creativity and you get to work with other people and have a lot of fun with the group. So this is really awesome. Um, I have kind of been more of a solo jumper just because of where I am located. And so when I went to university, there were no other jumpers. And so I was training predominantly on my own. Same with, you know, when I'm traveling the world, it's really fun to meet jumpers in other countries. This is super cool because, you know, we don't always speak the same language, but jump rope is definitely a universal language. Uh, and so we can meet up and do that. But as far as competition goes, where you're in a gym every day training, You know, this is this can be hard unless you're directly with teammates every single day. So, yeah. So can you please tell us what brought you to Germany? Because I know for a fact that you're kind of living permanently now here. Uh, yeah, well, it's on. I don't want my family. <laughs> okay, I'm still in base in the U.S. Actually, um, I've just been working a lot in Germany. Um, it started about two years ago. I was here only for three weeks for a show. It was really last minute. Um, the company, they, they needed performers and I happened to be free. Uh, and then they were happy with the performance. So I came back did a little bit, went home, came back again. And each time I didn't know I was going to be coming back again. So the contracts are pretty short, usually one to three months. Um, it just kind of kept getting them as I went. And then last year I got a six month contract with a, a group show and then a new show started this year, which we got and then actually was stuck here during COVID or else I should have been back in the States. But honestly, it's been great experience to be here, especially in this like really strange time. I miss my family, but um, it's been a pretty nice situation in Germany too. 
Well, so. this is crazy because at the beginning of the year, I was supposed to give a seminar, like a class or a clinic okay. in, in New York. And okay. It was in March. And at home, I finished my favorite M&Ms, the peanut butter M&Ms. Yeah. Because I knew I was going to the US to get some more, you know? And uh-huh. then I could not, because by this time, you were not allowed to like go get into the country, but you could still leave the country. Yeah. So fuck this. I could not go there and I had no M&Ms. So that was good and bad for me at the same time. So have you been to the US before? Yeah, I have been. Okay, where have you gone? Yeah, pretty Just... much all over. Like okay, more the coast, like East and West Coast, not so much okay. the Midlands. Yeah, cool. <laughs> but yeah, so I love these M&Ms. I'm kind of addicted. Not to any to more sweets, but these. Bring some of those or like ship them over sometimes. Yeah, my should... mom can like, hey mom, if you're watching this, <laughs> we need some M&Ms with peanut butter. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, yeah. this is, uh, yeah, oh my god. <clears throat> so, Tori, you also work as a trainer, choreographer, designer. Designer? Can yeah. you please explain that? Yeah. <laughs> so, I went to the Ohio State University and I studied industrial design and pre medicine. So what I wanted to do was actually be a physician who can design medical devices. Um, And a lot of my projects were based on designing health or fitness products, uh, surgical devices. I did uh, fitness initiatives, like these types of of products in my undergrad. And my plan was to go to medical school after graduating. Um, And my brother was actually going to do the same. So we were trying to go to Ohio State together. Uh, But after undergrad, I just, I wasn't ready for this. And I got a performance opportunity with Cirque du Soleil, and I was like, okay, I have to do this now. When else will I ever have the opportunity? Now is the time for sure. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Uh, But for sure, I studied design. Um, We did a lot of graphic uh, work, a lot of industrial design work, a lot of computer models, animations, all of this type of stuff. So I also still dabble in that and do graphic design for people and, and stuff like that on the side here as well. So, yeah. Very good, very good. And... On top of that, you have your own company. Yeah. It's called Tally Jump. Tally Jump. Yes. Please explain that. Ah, uh, yeah, this is super cool. So, two years ago, we started it with a Kickstarter, which is, which is a crowdfunding application, I guess. So, if you don't know what crowdfunding is, it works off of people donating money for a product to happen. So, we had a certain goal online. If we did not reach that goal based off of people's donations, with regard to receiving the product after it's made, then it just doesn't get produced. No one lost money. We just lost some time making it happen. Uh, but it was really successful. We raised 40,000 euros, which was pretty cool. And we started manufacturing the device. And And how it works is it's a sensor. I should have it at the table. It's over there. Um, <laughs> but you put it under your right shoelace, and then it connects to a tally jump app on your phone, and, and you connect them via Bluetooth. And what it does is it counts your jumps, and it tracks your training. And so oh, this, especially coming from being a solo jumper at college, at university, where I didn't have people to count me or to practice with or you know to get that back and forth. And so this was you know, kind of that type of brainchild of like, how can we help people who are training alone? Maybe they can't count themselves. Maybe they want to be able to track those sessions. Um, and, and that's what Tally Jump is for. And we're constantly improving it. It's a small business right now. Our, our goal initially was for competitive jump rope athletes um, and to be able to provide an accurate scoring system that removes human error. Mm-hmm. That was also a big emphasis on the, the device. And so now we're, we're starting to add kind of more uses for it as far as interval, interval training and um, combining music and kind of reaching even the greater fitness aspect of, of jump ropers. So yeah, it's, it's been really cool. I've learned so much. The crowdfunding part of it has been really interesting. And also the company is based in France. It just kind of worked out. I can give you the backstory on that. Um, so that's been really interesting, working with French IT and, and business developers as well, kind of the cross-cultural interactions there. I um, mean, kind of how it started was uh, a long time ago, a lady from my city in, in West Virginia, she jumped on the team that I started with. Her name is Brie Moreau. And uh, she moved to France and she wanted to start a jump rope team. She got married, had kids. Um, so she contacted us in West Virginia and said, hey, could you come over and help us develop a jump rope program uh, in Nayou, France? Um, and so we started doing that once or twice a year since I was in junior high. And then a few years ago, um, her husband, who's a business developer, was just like, you know, how do you think you could solve this problem of like 
eliminating human error or judging errors in the sport. And so I was telling him, oh, this would be really cool if we had this device that you could you know, use and count your jumps. And um, he's like, okay, I can make that happen. I mean, yeah, right. Like, that's okay, whatever. Sure, if you can make that happen, that's perfect. We'll do it, not even thinking that this would ever happen. I returned to France one year later to work with the team. And he's like, okay, I have a team of people. We're ready to, to make this company. I was like, what? What do you mean we're ready to make this company? So um, that's kind of how it randomly happened because it's, it's really crazy to go through the whole manufacturing process of literally making a tangible object. Like, so this has been, it's been crazy. So to put it in a nutshell, at the age of 27, you're a multiple world champion. You are an entrepreneur. You have a master's. In yeah, I'm getting it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah you're getting it, about to get it. And... It just started. Oh my God, Tori, <laughs> how can you just manage to do this? This is probably why my German isn't so good right now, because I, I really need to take German classes and I'm not focusing on it. And please forgive me, all of Germany. But uh, once I finish schooling, I hope I can learn more German. But yeah. <laughs> It's actually not true, because Tori knows a few phrases. So please, Tori, <laughs> oh, no. this is your chance to... Yeah. So, uh, um, dein Deutsch zu zeigen. Yeah, okay. So, my friends taught me a few really important German phrases that they said I would absolutely need. And uh, clearly, I do because they're coming in handy right now. <laughs> um, but let's see. Uh, das ist nicht das Gebe from I. This is maybe my favorite. I could use this one, I guess, a lot. Um, also. <laughs> The perfect phrase. Um, gespannt wie ein Plitzebogen und uh, ein geschenkten Gal schaut man nicht ins Maul. Oh, so, sehr gut, sehr yeah. gut. <laughs> These are very important. But actually, um, in the show I'm doing currently, so we're performing right now in Hanover, um, one of the performers dur during my act, he comes on stage and is, it's actually a boxing, we're, we're spoofing on a boxing match, so I have rounds in my act. He comes on stage and is my coach. And every day he started giving me a new German word, which is really cool. Of course, I'm like crazy out of breath in this moment. And he's trying to tell me this word like in slow motion. <laughs> like I never really get it totally right. But he's given me some good words like Hanshu and like these types of like basic noun so i am learning <laughs> you said it pr uh, quite well springseil springseil yeah yeah i have to get this one right <laughs> this is like yeah, what i do that. <laughs> this is imperative so and now i have a little challenge for you it's actually the first time that we're doing this oh, no. but since tori is a native english speaker we have to give her some german tongue twisters okay. Zungenbrecher. okay you know Zungenbrecher? Tongue, tongue twisters. Tongue twisters. Okay. Can, you, can you try saying it? Uh, can you say it one more time? Zungenbrecher. Zungenbrecher. Yes, very good. So just ignore the first two lines. Okay. Here. Go. How do I know that this is okay what I'm saying? <laughs> we'll be, the audience will, will tell you. Oh no. Okay. Blaukraut bleibt, Blaukraut, Blaukraut, bleibt, Blaukraut, Clyde. What? <laughs> Okay, it's like red cabbage. It's Blau red cabbage. cabbage. Okay. And, uh, wedding dress is wedding dress. Pretty much that's okay. But Blau kraut, blau, blau kraut, blau, brau kraut, blau, brau kraut. Oh, don't we love German? <laughs> okay. Uh, Fisher's Fritz fished, Frischer, 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 Fisher's Fritz. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ritza? Oh, this is really hard too. Am I saying any of that right? It's quite good. Okay. Fischers Fritze fischt frische Fische. Frische Fische fischt f Fischers Fritze. <laughs> okay, now why are you so good at that? <laughs> this would be hard, I feel like, even if it was an English phrase. What? <laughs> I don't know. Blaukraut bleibt Blaukraut und Brautkleid bleibt Brautkleid. That's you know, as a journalist. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so, but... Now you're challenging me back because I have two more in English. Perfect. And you start them and then I'll continue. Uh, do you, so you know these? No, I just found them out yesterday, recently. Ah, okay. And so, yeah. So Betty Butter had some butter, but she said this butter is bitter. If I bake this bitter butter, it would make my batter bitter. <laughs> but a bit of better butter, that would make my batter better. So she bought a bit of butter, better than a bitter butter, and she baked it in her batter, and the batter was not bitter. So it was Betty 
better, better, Betty Potter, <laughs> bottom, better, better, butter. So very good. Now it's my turn. Oh my god, this oh is god. hard. This is gonna be so hard. Okay, okay. Betty Butter had some butter, but she said this is butter's bitter. If I bake this bitter butter, it would make me better bitter. But a bit of better butter that would make my better better. So she bought a bit of butter, better than her bitter butter, and she <laughs> baked it in her batter and the batter was not bitter so it was better be betty butter <laughs> bought a bit of betty butter that was good was it yeah <laughs> my tongue broke you know you could really say a bunch of different words and i wouldn't i wouldn't yeah. know so. so now we continue with the with the number four okay okay oh let's see a skunk sat on a stump and thunk the stump stunk but the stump thunk the skunk stunk <laughs> this is nice <laughs> This is really nice. I think this is pretty much from elementary school. Or yeah, something. this is nice. Okay, I wanted a pet skunk once. <laughs> but skunk is pet. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> skunk sat on a stump and thunk the stump stank. Stunk? But the stump th thank <laughs> skunk stunk. <laughs> oh my god. Skunk sat on a stump. Yeah, good. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay. This one's hard because you could accidentally say some not very nice words. But that was good. So we had a that was a, a, the first challenge because okay. today is new. We have a few challenges. Okay. We'll do some arm wrestling later. We'll do rope. I will always say rope jumping. This is okay. The other way around. Jump, um, roping. jump roping. Yeah. yeah. It's actually so in the U.S. we say jump rope as the name of the sport, but in Europe they usually use rope skipping. Yeah, this yeah. is how I know. It. Yeah, this rope is skipping. this was always a little confusing to us that we have these different terms, but yeah, same. rope skipping. So we do a challenge in rope, rope skipping, skipping with eyes closed and open. Oh, and what else did I? <laughs> what else do we have? We have. Uh... <laughs> I don't know if you really do it, but a high kick challenge. A high kick. Okay. Yeah, like I'm you're, down. You're Let's quite try. flexible. Whatever. Do you can you do a uh, spread legs on one leg, <laughs> but like this way, middle? Oh no, can you do that? That's really difficult. Yeah, we could try it later. It's like yeah, okay. <laughs> Most circus performers can do this though, but not me. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I I said it already, but I have to say it one more time. You're 30 time grand world jump rope champion, Tori Box. Oh my god, we're gonna all cross all age divisions. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. You've killed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I know. And yeah, you killed it. Thank and you. you're five time all around grand world ramp. Show you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> five time all around grand world jump rope champion. It's almost like a tongue twister. Yeah. There's a lot of <laughs> words in there just to be specific. So, and what you said earlier, you're a performing artist. So, you work for work. You perform for Cirque du Soleil, Flip Fabrique, Rob Works, Cirque Dreams and Cirque Productions, and GOP Varité in the <laughs> Französisch Sprache, Theater Germany. That's perfect. That's very so perfect. this is how it started. This is why you really came to Germany? Yeah, to perform. Yeah. Like, how did they, like, find you? Ah, uh, yeah. I We were actually recommended. So I came in a group of three. We did a, a team act to begin. Um, and yeah, we just happened to kind of be recommended by a friend in, in the sport who's, who's also performing and um, it just kind of took off from there. Very lucky, very by chance that it even happened, but I'm so grateful for this because I absolutely love performing. I've always wanted to, to be in that position to be able to do it. I love live theater. It's different every day. The audiences are different. You never know what's going to happen. Sometimes really weird things happen, and uh, it's really fun. It's it's funky, fresh, fun every day, so I love it. Like, I remember how I found you was you were suggested to me on Instagram. Okay. Because I guess, like, sport and athlete, it, like, fits together, and then it was like, oh, my God, this is, I love it. And oh, then cool. when, I, when I saw your profile, it's, it increased heavily like you started above like 10,000 okay and then you're like now we're at 90,000 or whatever and yeah. like just week within weeks yeah this is really crazy it's it's really crazy to me and super unexpected and it's all because of of the covid like isolation situation and uh we had just our show was forced to finish so um we had started performing in essen with this new GOP show called Funky Town. And one weekend, and the theaters have to close, of course, so we're, we're basically stuck in Germany. And 
theater was awesome. We had an apartment, a place to stay, and I had this really cool little patio outside, which is where most of my videos are. With the like red color. Yeah, exactly. And okay, there's some haters that are like, it needs power wash. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really have control of that. Or I, I weed almost daily, but they come back, you know. But uh, I was so lucky to have this space to be able to use literally just outside my window every day. Um, and so there, there happened to be a video challenge, I think, um, a few CrossFitters and a company Noble project put on. And uh, it was to win a pair of shoes, and Noble's like my favorite shoes, so I was like, I have to enter this contest. And it was the Blinding Lights Dance Challenge. Um, I know Tia, Claire, Katrin, um, and uh, Brooke Wells, who represent Noble, all like posted this video of like, do this challenge. So, okay, this would be fun. It gives me something to do. So I made the video, had a blast making it, and it, it went over super well on Instagram because I hadn't really been posting any jump rope videos up to that point. And so I was like, you know what? I had a blast doing that. I'll just start making some fun videos. I have this time, um, a very depressing time, and jump rope always makes me happy. So let's let's just see what happens. And as I was posting these videos, I started getting messages from people who were feeling that same way of like, this is a depressing time, we don't have much motivation, but your videos have made us really happy and now we want to exercise, we want to jump rope. I was like, oh, this is super cool. I don't know why people are watching my videos or how they found me, but that's really inspiring for me to, to continue. So I, I just, I did, I just kept making these videos and, and having fun and enjoying every minute of it. and. I really have the most amazing supportive fans. They just are the sweetest with their messages and giving me song suggestions and, and ideas. Um, and as a competitor in the sport where we have specific rules, uh, you know, you have to hit the quadrants on the floor during a routine or you have to, to meet X, Y, Z requirements of a, of a freestyle routine. Um, we're used to having these restrict, like somewhat of restrictions in the sport. And then coming into the performance world, it kind of blows that away because the audience, they don't care necessarily how crazy difficult a jump rope skill is. Skills move so quickly too, as we do them. So they might not even see them. Something that maybe took me like three years to do, they might have no idea. And so, so this totally has changed how I jump and my style of that on stage. And also in these videos, I, I see that, you know, people are responding to moves that I didn't you know, even think about before. And and this has really helped me grow as, as an artist and creativity and wise and just have a lot of fun doing it. So I'm having fun. I hope other people are now picking up jump ropes and, and trying out the sport as well because it's really fun, really fun time. You can do it anywhere. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not an Olympic sport, just as my sport, MMA. Yeah, yeah. But you could do like acrobatic. Is that the right word? Yeah. Are you? Like, could you go on the Olympic team? Uh, for acrobat? Uh, is it like your, your, your plan, your idea anyway? Uh, no. or so it... we're working really hard actually to get jump rope into the Olympics. Um, so just a little shout out to our international federation is International Jump Rope Union, IGRU. And uh, we are now an observational sport. And um, we're talking to Ames and Gaves and uh, we do sport accord conventions and, and talk with the Olympic Committee. So we're getting there. We have 72 countries that we're working with right now. And the goal, you know, is to get official national federations, have everyone be doing competitions, have a developed jump rope program and, and be able to, to grow athletes uh, in, in the sport. And this is happening. We're really excited about this. Of course, COVID and the, the pandemic changes absolutely everything, like what every sport is looking yeah. like right now. And and this is hard because we were supposed to have, a, you know, a tournament actually a couple weeks ago. We were going to have the world tournament, obviously couldn't. Um, so it's it's figuring out how to move into the future with that. And, you know, I think jump rope actually has a really nice opportunity for this because we can be in videos and, and we can have that aspect of the sport as well. So we are working on the Olympics. It's the same with MMA. Yes. It's so good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly the same point pretty much. Cool. So it could happen within the next eight years. Very pretty cool. certainly. Yeah. But yeah, for a lot of people, it seems to be too violent and you know, judo and everything has a big lobby and okay. they don't want MMA to, you know, become that popular, I guess. I don't know. Okay. But Definitely, we are ambassadors for the sport. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. It's a really cool position. Yeah, I mean, it's like we're pioneers, you know, for something new coming in. Like, how crazy is yeah. that? But this year was crazy, man. I was supposed to have so many, you know, good fights. Yeah. But nothing. 
until the end of the year, there's nothing happening, really. Yeah, it's really a sad situation. Well, I guess we have to, like, soak it in. Yeah. Use the power on a different... Yeah, exactly. In a different way. Turn it and, into like, a positive... Yeah. It was not... It's not necessarily easy. I mean, I don't know. But at least you have the shows. Right now, we have pretty much yeah. nothing. Okay. Did you say that you have a fight coming up? I thought I saw that on Instagram, maybe. Like Actually, that was my year. post for okay. my April and June fight. Okay. And I was supposed to have a title fight in November. Okay. But I, obviously, uh, it's not yeah. happening. Yeah. And uh, since we're not the UFC, yeah. who had the Fight Island yeah. project, um, I guess this year is... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tori, now I would say we should move over to the rubric. Did I say it right? Rubric. Okay. 15 quick questions. <laughs> okay. We should make a dance of it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's start. Okay. You just answer like instinctively? Yeah. Instinctively? Instinctively. Yeah, yeah. Instinctively. Cool. Oh my god. <laughs> I got you. All good. Coffee or tea? Uh, tea. Dog or cat? Dog. House or flat? Uh, house. Bicycle or car? Bicycle. Train or plane? Ooh, train. White or black? Black. Half empty or half full? Half full. <laughs> Bar or at home? Home. <laughs> Perms or sneakers? What? Perms? Oh, like, pumps? Hi- like high heels? Pumps. I do love them. <laughs> Believe it or not. Okay, keep going. Sorry. <laughs> Job or family? Uh, family, yeah. Water still or sparkling? Still. Water? Ice or milk ice? Ice. What's milk? What are, what like are ice cream. <clears throat> ah. Like what? Like you know, like a sorbet. Water. Wait, water or ice cream? No. Is the... oh, okay. No. It's, we say wasser ice, like ah, ice okay, cream made this... of like on ah, okay. water base. So no so milk. So milk ice cream. Yeah, is my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Jogging or cycling? Cycling. Wedding? Yes or no? Someday. <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna have a small lot of small or a big party? Oh lord. Um, probably small. No. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> okay, we are done with this. <laughs> it's just fun because we like introduce these questions to the last few guests, and it's always fun because everyone's like, uh, "Good question." <laughs> That's a great. Ch- do I ask you back? No, no. Okay. No. Okay. Um, what do you? What's a man thing for you, and what's a girl or women's thing? Could you like say that? Like in jump rope? No, in general, in life. Oh, in like like. Like, you know, soccer and beer was supposed to be a man thing, but obviously girls or women can also enjoy this. Yeah, I mean, well, I grew up playing soccer, so to me, it's also a woman thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. You could also say, no, there's no difference, not anymore. Maybe there used to be. It's, it's up to you what you use. What's your opinion? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just thinking in terms of our sport and, and kind of the difference between Is guys there more and girls. girls or men in general? At younger ages, it's more female. Uh, Long term, older, it's actually more male. Um, This is super cool because the guys that do stick with the sport into older age that now have the strength, they can just do some really crazy things. And that's where I was kind of thinking of maybe the gender differences that are offered is just the, the amount of strength that guys can put into the sport. Just doing creative moves like acrobatics, this type of stuff. I mean, girls can also do that. And that's actually been um, part of growing up. That was always my goal in, in presenting a freestyle routine in the competition was to try to be like the guys, to try to be as strong as them. And I didn't, a lot of girls were doing these beautiful, dancey skills. And that just wasn't, now I do more of them for sure, but that wasn't me at all. I was always trying to do the backflips and the super hard power skills and, and strength moves. So yeah, I would like to say that, you know, Girls can definitely do that also. But there's for sure just differences of, of style even that come with that. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think distinguishes a hero? Ooh. It's never giving up. Yeah. Just continuing to, to practice and work and, and not give up on a goal. Charm. Would you say there's a difference between you and a hero? Ah, uh, well... Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I yeah, no, that. actually, no, <laughs> nine, yeah, I don't know, um, no, I mean, I wouldn't ever think of, of myself like that, you know, but, um, 
Yeah, I would consider more of like my mom, my dad, and my brother the heroes and, and always trying to replicate or recreate those parts of, of who they are and try to add them to my life as well. So in the case of my brother, he was um, a professional soccer player. He was in the, the MLS and played for the New England Revolution. And uh, he did this after college, and now he's a fourth year in medical school at Ohio State, probably doing interventional radiology. We don't know. But he is just one of the hardest workers ever. Like, I, I admire him so much for his ability to just keep going and just keep persevering no matter what. And uh, uh, this is something I, I try to do to be like him. Um, and, and he's just really a bright guy. And, and I try to look at him as that type of hero in my life for sure. Um, and then my mom, she is so intense and full of just passion. And whatever she decides to do, she's just fully putting her heart and, and into it. And, and she treats people the same way. She's fully, fully putting her heart into to helping people. And this is something I also try to recreate is just that never giving up of, of helping others. And, and then my dad is, he is one of the wisest and most kind people I, I could ever meet and uh, just willingly gives up himself to, to help others. And so these are our, our three heroes I for sure look up to and, and try my best to like recreate in my life. I think I fall short of them all the time, but to be able to just try to keep pursuing and never giving up on, on following their lead for sure. That's very nice. Yeah. Actually, since you're traveling a lot, just like me, and did you figure out like a lot of gender stereotypes with with like traveling? Like USA is obviously different than Germany, and obviously when you go to the whatever Arab Emirates or whatever, then it's totally different than I don't know. As far as gender goes, or ah. like prejudices or a girl and a man thing. Mm, yeah. Okay. I mean. I will say I'm I'm very lucky to work a lot in countries where there's a lot of freedom in that regard. Um, I have worked in Dubai, actually, and honestly, the experience for me was, was quite good. I, I never had personally any issues because um, I just know that the culture is a bit more strict. Um, and actually, this was one of my MBA papers I just submitted like a week ago was about that those differences that exist kind of in in the different cultures and respecting that and what that means. Um, I know for me, I don't, I really don't focus too much on, on those types of things or anything that can kind of hinder my goals or, or what I want to be able to do. And, and what I want to do is, is do what I love and, and enjoy it. And, uh, haters are going to hate, you know, <laughs> like it's still the same. <laughs> it same always is, but I, I don't know. I feel like I can kind of ignore that pretty easily and just, keep going forward and uh otherwise I, I you know I haven't experienced a lot of of issues otherwise. so then it's good for you I guess yeah yeah I've been I think lucky in that way maybe maybe it's your your nature yeah because you're so happy and I think I just I really just kind of don't focus on that and just anything negative I'm like let's let's find a positive and let's keep going and that's not what I'm here for I'm not here to be brought down by anything and Let's let's do the job, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So I'm not focusing on on other. So that's yeah. a good point. I like that. Yeah. Um, what makes you happy? Ah, jump rope, of course. <laughs> no, I just uh just enjoying moments, and I have a, I am so lucky to have really amazing experience like this experience, like how how we met and just interacted and and meeting a really nice person who is a strong female and, and doing some really positive things for women, but also your sport and, and you know, it's been a really nice interaction. I'm so lucky for this. I feel very grateful for so many things that happen in my life. And, you know, it's not always the case, you know, there's negative things that happen as well, but it's it's how you perceive those things and, and making something negative Is it really negative if you can turn it into a positive and help it affect your life? Um, so I have these really great opportunities, and uh, I just love to live in the moment and take advantage of, of that and uh, just find positivity in everything and, and stay happy that way. Well, I have to admit, sometimes the the, the much I love my sport, the, the same time it can make me super sad when things don't work out the way or oh, yeah. training was shit or sparring was shit. I don't know. It's... Uh frustrating sometimes but at the end of the day i mean 
I do what I love. Yeah. Or I love what I do. So I would not complain. Yeah. Maybe about health issues. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah. When you, you do you want to like your brain is telling you I want to, but you can't because you have I don't know. Uh, injury on whatever yeah that happens here and then i guess yeah when you train a lot it's just normal i know of course as women we have sometimes different issues than guys have as well to go through and yeah for sure but all of those negative experiences though i think they only fuel the fire for you have a bad practice why are you mad like why are you upset about it you're upset because you care and so that only fuels the the fire to come back the next day hit it even harder do even better and then when you do have that positive result, you feel even greater about that fight and that journey. So we can always turn into a positive, right? <laughs> That's a good one. I'm I'm inspired. <laughs> I'm inspired by you, Tori. Oh, it's good. Like I like I like the positive energy. It's just like I don't know. It's good. Ah, cool. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. What does women hit harder mean for you personally? I was thinking about this that this morning. I love the title of this. And uh, this is also why I was kind of reflecting on our interaction, was how it is really important to, to interact with other females that are also being the strong, influensive women, because, you know, we have a lot to offer. It doesn't, you know, we have a lot of different issues than guys, which is what we're talking about before. And uh, I think it's important that we take advantage of what does make us women and that does make us special and that we make sure that we can shout that from the rooftops, so to say, and and just keep going and, and being able to pursue what we want and what we love to do as well. So that's what I was thinking of when I hear women hit harder. What does that mean? That means that we're awesome. We are awesome women. We are strong women and, and we can absolutely pursue our dreams and goals and what we want to do and no one should be able to stop us from doing that. So. And luckily, or hopefully, we can inspire other women and girls to do the to, same. To do the same. Yeah. Be positive. Make the best of it. Yeah. Out of it. Of it. All of it works. All, all of it works. <laughs> all of it. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what motivates you? Um. Yeah, I mean goals. Goals for sure motivate me. Also, if do you set them too high? It can happen. I think it's really important to be able to break down. Okay, this is your ultimate goal, but what are the steps to get there? You know, okay, my goal when I was younger is I wanted to break the triple under's world record. Well, it's not going to happen overnight, right? And if it if I was expecting that, I would have been immediately frustrated and and maybe even lost interest at that point. So it's important to to pursue smaller goals, smaller pieces, you know, take bites in smaller pieces, so to say, um to to get to those goals and uh, that's definitely something that is really important as an athlete is, is to be able to gauge what that's going to take to get to something. Because if you underestimate it or even overestimate it, you can have some issues as an athlete or, you know, your journey changes. And so I think being able to, to know yourself, know your body, know your mind, um, and constantly be able to reflect on both of those and how you're changing, uh, this is really important to be able to pursue your goals. What are you telling yourself prior competition? Yeah, um, first of all, you have to have the training. If you don't, if you hadn't done the training before competition, you're not going to feel good going in. And I've been there. I've, you know, all aspects of not feeling good or not being ready or having a bad day. I've been through all of it. You know, as as a competitor for so many years, you know, it, it, things happen, and a lot of times you can't control it, but you can control your training and you can control how you prepare for a competition. And, um, you know, the day before a competition, if you're feeling not good, it's a little late for that. But, uh, you know, there it can still switch the other day. Yeah, exactly. You, you just have to do the best that you can, you know. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of preparation beforehand as far as, as training and, and getting ready. And once again, things might, you know, you might have an injury that affects how you're preparing for the competition. And that has totally happened before as well. I've broken my bones before, you know, world competition or something like this, um, definitely. And there's even days where I feel ready for competition, I'm walking on the floor and I'm like, okay, I need to focus, I can do this, and it just falls apart. Like, it just doesn't go how I wanted it to go. And uh, yeah, that day really, it sucks. <laughs> um, but, you know, you use it to, to 
reflect on how can you prevent that as much as possible going into the next competition. And uh, jump rope is really a unique sport for that because uh, I guess we're pretty different than MMA because you're fighting with someone directly. And so you, you know, there's a lot of unpredictable things that can happen and you're, you're gauging against your opponent, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah that's that, true. Do you have a better way that you want to describe that? Or? No, it's perfectly fine. Okay. Yeah, and jump rope, it, you know, it obviously doesn't work like that. It's just you, it's the rope, and it's the time or the exercise yeah. you're doing, right? Yeah. With me, it changes, like, every second. Yeah. Anticipation. Yeah. Or whatever your opponent is doing, you have to, like, adjust to it. And yeah. Yeah, this is really interesting. And as much as I love that aspect of sports, as I was a soccer player, I, I do get a bit of that. Um, I really love jump rope because it is just you and a rope. And this was something that was really important to me as a competitor growing up in the sport was it wasn't about my other competitors. Like, I I honestly avoided watching routines um, for the most part at competitions and, and even prior to that because I didn't want any outside influence on my work and what I was doing because I was there to, to do the best I could do mm -hmm. to break, you know, to... to jump faster than I did before, to train harder than I did before, to get new skills that I didn't before have. And it was it was for that. It was for me. And uh, so going into a, a competition, there are times where I, I won and I wasn't happy at all with my performance. And um, so, yeah, okay, it's nice that I, I won that day. You know, grateful for that. But uh, it's it, it always felt a bit kind of a numbing experience. Like, okay, I, I'm not so happy. Why? Why did I not do well? What can I do better in the future to, to improve myself? And then there are the days where I absolutely, like, am smashed so happy, it. smashed <laughs> it, and the results didn't work out. And, and that's just how the sport works, is yeah. there's some subjectivity to things, or there's just people that are better, you know? That's just what it comes down to is, okay, well, I didn't win, I did my best, now I, I can go back to training and do better. What does a usual practice look with you? Like, are you training once or twice a day? Yeah, so right now it's a whole different schedule in uh, uh, theater and, and working-wise. Um, now I am ultra paranoid about not getting injured because this is now my job, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting paid to perform. So there's the pressure of uh, being as perfect as I possibly can every show because, once again, I have an audience, I... I'm a professional, you know. You're a professional performer. Yeah, exactly. And uh, then also staying healthy because I don't want to jeopardize uh, my job, but also I don't want to jeopardize the other artists in the show as well because if an artist has to go out or something, this affects everyone and everything. So, yeah, it's definitely different now. Uh, for competition, it changes once more. We're in the gym, you know, sometimes five hours a day. And then in addition to that, we're doing gymnastics training, of course, stretching all the preparation before and after that comes from directly working out. And oftentimes we divide those practices into two times a day. So we're doing the morning and the evening practices. And yeah, it's, it's a lot. And for how long? I mean, how many jump ropes are you doing in one minute? Is that like an exercise you do? Ah, actually, so we didn't have, we don't have a world record for this event, but I did have the national record where I do have that. Oh, I can't even remember what it is. <laughs> uh, she doesn't know anymore three, it's just under 380 I believe I think it's like 378 in one minute 378 jumps in one minute 300 yeah <laughs> I remember yeah. like yeah it's it's like really it's one of those numbers <laughs> but yeah yeah because it's like <laughs> yeah it's really fast <laughs> but we use we use wire ropes so they're super light they cut through the air and um That's why you yeah. have to tell you jump. Now I get it. I would not, my head would be like, <laughs> well, that's the thing is so shaking when counting. We're jumping, you know, we, we're controlling a rope. When you get to double dutch speeds where you have two turners and then someone's just focusing on jumping, it's, it's so fast. You, you cannot count. It's really difficult. So judges, we usually have a tally counter, like a manual counter. Mm -hmm. um, and there's typically three to five judges that do this and you only count the right foot of a jumper because it's just it's so quick so we're alternating feet like this right? yeah just like we do yeah and then double it but yeah it's 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 crazy and that's what that's a problem we're trying to solve in the sport you know is is making sure that athletes are accurately counted do you yeah. have like pain in your ankles or knees sometimes because uh, it's like for the cartilage i can remember like all the jumping all the time yeah so It's just, it's important that you really gauge your body 
and and understand. And this is actually part of my pre-show regimen. Mm-hmm. Is I I come to the theater super early, so it's it's relaxed day as far as like doing my hair and makeup and stuff like this. But then I go through kind of a body uh, check, a body yeah, checkup yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. of like how I'm feeling, where I'm feeling really tight, if I have any you know, ongoing injuries or pains or stuff like this and, and trying to do my best to warm up and solve those problems beforehand. And that's a constant thing. You can't you can't let down on, on taking care of your body for sure. And now that I'm doing a lot of these videos, which is they're outside on concrete, this is not the... If you have another option to jump on besides concrete, I would suggest that you go for a softer surface for sure um, because it can take its toll. It's more exhausting and it definitely can... can you know, be more force on your on your joints and everything like that. But uh, yeah, so I really have to focus on my body. I have really been injured. I will say that I've broken bones, I've torn muscles, I've had strains on ligaments and tendons. Fortunately, I haven't torn anything. A common injury in our sport is actually an Achilles tendon tear. No, what? Achilles tendon tear. What is it? The tendon behind your ah, yeah, yeah. chin here. Mm-hmm, I know. Mm-hmm. This is so common in our sports because of the use of our lower legs. And uh, this is something we all get really paranoid about. We talk about, okay, we have to make sure we warm up our Achilles tendons. And our use uh, good tapes, our kin- kinesio tapes. Yeah, and a lot of athletes. treatments and warm. Exactly. You have to stay warm. Yeah, this is really important. And uh, I know in competitions, those are long days, really long days. And um, it's not always... You're warm, you're cold, you're warm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's it's exhausting just staying warmed up or prepared to go. Perform. Sweating all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you get cold and you get tired and yeah. then energy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I remember that from judo tournaments. Okay. Where you had a fight, then you had to have to wait for, I don't know, 30 minutes and then it's your, your turn again. Yeah. And like stay warm, stay it's just, warm. Mm-hmm. It's like a roller coaster. At night journey. you're just like super exhausted. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yep. I sleep just like this. Yep, yep. Yeah, this is really hard. And uh, we only have those competitions every, you know, the world competitions once a year. And so being able to, to train and then you're exhausted from the competition. This is really crazy. So you're also training not only for the event that you're doing, but also just for the endurance of the, comp- the tournament itself. You know, and I do like the performance part of this because we don't have to worry about that at all. I know exactly when I'm going on stage for the most part. And, you know, we have the show times and this is really nice part of, of the predictability helps you stay healthy as well as, as being able to have the regimens of how I warm up when I do it and that type of thing for sure. So what is your perfect day looking like? If you um, are not training or not competing, what is Tori's best day? Well, performing for sure. <laughs> if I'm not doing the competitions or like training, it's got to be performing. So you do actually make a difference between performing and competing. Yeah, I, I really separate the two. For sure, I pr- approach both differently. Um, mentally, they're very differently. The tricks I do are very different. <laughs> you know, everything about it is quite different. Um, definitely two different worlds. You, you know. can promise me some tricks later, right? Oh, for sure, girl. You're gonna learn how to do some cool stuff. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So, what are your three basic foods? Like, what is your basic food that you always have at home? Like the top three. Oh, um, bananas. Unfortunately. I don't always eat those fast enough. <laughs> then they get brown. And yeah, like, and then it's really kind of sad. Um, I really like blueberries a lot, so I try to always have those around. Um, and then tea. Yeah, I always have like some type of flavored tea at home. I do love it, like a green tea. Um, actually, I feel like there's a lot more tea options in Europe, which I like as far as fruit teas go. Like you guys have the rooibos and the, um, uh, what's my favorite flavor, Hollander? Holunda? Yeah, yeah, we don't really have this so much in the U.S. Elderflower, you call yeah, Elderflower, it. yeah. Mm. We don't have these types of... So I love that in Germany. I always get it. It's just like uh, gray, like black, and some green. Yeah, and like not so what exciting. Peppermint, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not as fun. <laughs> so you have to ship a lot of tea over. Yeah, I'll have to. So you send me the M&Ms and I send you some tea. If you <laughs> I like this. That's <laughs> a deal. <laughs> Ongoing exchange. Where do you see yourself? Oh, no, this is like a busty question, right? Where do you see yourself in like five to ten years? Oh, no. It's like college essays again or something. <laughs> These were so hard to answer. I had no idea. Just going with uh, the flow? Yeah, I think this is true. For sure, I have I have goals of, of um, you know, getting my MBA, finishing the MBA degree and um, 
growing in, in the sport, helping the sport get into the Olympics would also be a really good goal. As far as my personal life, this is such a hard question because I made these these plans when I was younger and I really kind of hated doing them because I knew that whatever I do in my life, it's not a path that exists. You know, I was always going to school to go to medical school and this was, it's not an easy path, mm. obviously. I had to be very sharp in school. I was always doing all the geeky things like math competitions and science fairs and I loved it, but what was nice was that that path, I knew the path. I knew exactly what I needed to do for the end result. And this is really hard now because... How now many... you can decide on your own? Yeah, well, that's hard. No I one mean, is telling you anymore yeah. what to do. <laughs> what? <laughs> what happens? It's a... You know. I was like, let me say something, because <laughs> I'm older than you. I experienced exactly the same. Yeah. Like, from 20 to 23, I did my BA in journalism and corporate communications. And then I started with my master's uh, in media studies. And I was 27 uh, when I finished, like when I handed in. So you yeah. will definitely have your MBA when you're 27, <laughs> pretty certain. But then was like, oh my God, now my career is going to start. Yeah. And then where's, can somebody please tell me what to do now? <laughs> I was I was used to somebody's telling me like, do yeah. the assignment, do this, do that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've always had this strong path, like sport, education. Yeah blah 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 everything that you have competing obviously teaching kids it's the same and now uh, when you when you grow up like for me personally I don't have much spare time free time yeah yeah. I'm like always doing something for like my personal achievements cool if it's not training I do the podcast and if I don't do this then I do this and like people keep asking me what about your free time do you ever like see your friends or I'm like well, it needs a good management. And that's, I feel shitty saying that, but I guess if you have these certain goals in life, then yeah, what what should you do? Yeah, this is really hard. We are hard workers. Yeah. So that means suffering on the other side. Or? Yeah, well, I also feel like if I'm not doing something, I'm doing something wrong. Or like you if s- I have free time, this is a problem. And <laughs> this is really not a good situation, you know. Like, what do I do? Okay, I what do, you do, do something. <laughs> do you sometimes feel useless when you do nothing? Yeah. yeah. I, I know what <laughs> you mean. I know what, like, like, <laughs> I like, uh, maybe I should clean then. Or maybe I should do another session. Or maybe I should, you know, prepare something. Or yeah. s- at least do something. Yeah, <laughs> the downtime is so hard. <laughs> this is so true. Yeah. Um, what would be your dream project and uh, with whom? Oh, this is also super hard. Hmm. Hmm. Dream, my dream project. Okay, so something with our sport in the Olympics would obviously be a dream. Yeah. Okay, look. I'll section that. So first of all, if <laughs> if our sport is in the Olympics, since I was younger, I always wanted to be in the Olympics. I'm sure you probably have had this dream as well. Okay, the sports that we fell in love with didn't necessarily work out for that. <laughs> um, and so now I feel like I have a responsibility kind of to the next youth generation yeah. that does have the potential to be in the Olympics. Now I feel like, okay, it's my responsibility to like make that happen for them. And so, okay, I might not be able to be an athlete in the Olympics, you never know, but I can at least maybe be a coach or some type of national team leader. Yeah, this would be super cool. Or or some type of leadership position to help our sport, our sport in that regard. This would be really amazing. And uh, I think this would be also very bittersweet because I'd be a little jealous that I'm not an athlete, of course, but just super proud of, of this whole journey it's been a long journey so <laughs> i yeah. like i feel like i feel like you it was the same with me I'm like oh my god i could be like the national team coach probably but kind of jealous that i would not compete myself but at the other time yeah on the other hand it's be like yeah nice i was the coach getting them there yeah this is cool and this since cool. I, you know for me as an i was an amateur long time and then last year i moved to the pro pro side and as a pro you can never fight back an amateur and amateur is only olympic ah okay. so that's another issue okay we so don't have how does sport. it work for you are you like a pro yeah you're a pro we don't have this type of distinction in our sport yet up to this point so i can still compete maybe you can yeah i mean it's more of just like if it's in the olympics while i s- still have working knees and like, yeah, like (laughs) everything is still going okay. Um, And also can keep up with 
with the upcoming generations. You know, they're super good, really strong and, and fast and powerful. Um, so staying on top of that would also be really tough. You, you never know what could happen. Uh, but that would for sure be a dream is just somehow being in that top leadership for helping our sport. And yeah, this would be pretty cool. How long are you planning doing jump rope skipping? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know jump rope will always be in my life, no matter what. Um, and this was something I did think about on my journey to be a physician is um, how can I keep keep jump rope in our sport, in our life? And and one of the things I've really wanted to pursue is is research of injuries in our sport and female athlete issues, because I think there's a lot of unknown elements and, and research still to be done in, in both regards. And for jump rope, you know, our sport is really wide open as far as what injuries are common to athletes. I'm jumping on concrete every day. That probably isn't the best. We need some results to show that, you know, especially if we're going to be in the Olympics, we're going to need that type of research behind our sport. I think this is really, really a cool area as well as far as going back to medical school and, and pursuing that also. Do you have something like like a life motto? Oh, do what you love and be happy. Yeah. Say it again. Do what you love and be happy. Do what you love and be happy. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Um, yeah, next episode is going to be in German again. It's going to be Kevin Kuske. And thanks for listening and watching again. Women Hit Harder. And see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>